Hey everybody, it's Adam back again with yet another tutorial from the Army Painter. Today we're going to be exploring the new characters that we developed for a new product line that we are going to be releasing in the next few months called Game Master. Today we're going to be painting up Zerisik Ikrai, a male tiefling wizard. He's often safe in the background, conjuring theatrical spells in the air. He likes to dish out the hurt and is often reckless in his pursuit of inflicting the maximum amount of pain to his enemies, putting his friends at risk in the process. In this final installment of our Zerisik tutorial series, we're going to be moving on to some masterclass techniques. This is gonna expand on our adventure ready and level up applications that we applied in the previous two tutorials with some more advanced highlights and maybe even some effects. So let's take a look at some of the paints that we're gonna be using in today's tutorial. So now that you have your paints, go ahead and get yourself some clean rinsing water, a wet palette, I sure like to use mine, and your favorite brush, and let's get started. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of Ancient Mummy and we're gonna reinforce some of that glowing eye effect, that glowing yellow eye. I'm gonna apply a little dot on top of the eye like so. Now we're gonna focus in on all of the skin tones. I have my wet palette here. I've got some succubus red and some sturge tan. I've mixed them together on my wet palette. Wet palette's a really great way to keep your paints fresh, especially your blends. And now I'm gonna be working between these two colors, these three colors on the skin. Now I've got that 50-50 mixture on my brush. I've got it loaded up and I'm just gonna apply this to the bridge of the nose, the tops of the cheeks, pick out the ears here very simply like so. I've got a nice smooth transition going on. Now I'm going to grab some of that pure sturge tan on my wet palette. I'm just going to dot the tip of the nose here just like so. Just a little dot there and then right at the upper portion of the cheek. Now if this goes a little bit too extreme you could always go back to that 50-50 mixture like so and just blend them back in together very easily. On the tips of the fingers here, you're gonna focus this just on the most raised areas of the fingers, leaving that wash in the recesses. Similarly to the cheeks here, I've got my 50-50 mixture. I'm gonna have a nice smooth highlight here, a broad highlight. I'm gonna grab some of that pure sturge tan and I'm just going to very carefully pick out the hard edge on these horns like so. This really adds some nice definition, really makes these details on this model pop. You can go back to that 50-50 mixture and blend them in for a nice seamless transition. Now that we finish off all the skin tones on the model, we've got that nice rosy, almost pinkish demon looking skin on our model. I'm going to finish off the darker red tones like the shirt and the belt here. We base that with cobalt skin and gave it a wash with our brown wash. Now I'm just going to take a bit of Cambian Crimson just to reintroduce a little bit more red. We're going to push the reds on the other parts of the model. So we want to make sure that this brownish red ends up with, uh, you know, the appearance of a red tone. So we're just going to very carefully trace in these highlights across the belt and the shirt of the model. Now I've got some Minotaur Hide on our palette. I'm just going to apply a simple edge highlight to all of the brown areas on the model, like the pouch here on his hip and this potion canister on the other side of his hip. And of course, the stave. So for this spiral effect, I'm just gonna trace the Minotaur hide into the center, leaving our original base tone to be shown through a little bit. I'm gonna just focus this on the top and uppermost ridges. On the areas here, on the shaft of the stave, I'm just gonna take the edge of the brush and I'm going to trace in. I'm gonna add an edge highlight here to really bring out the wood grain of the stave. Since this is our masterclass tutorial, I figure I'll just add another highlight. I had a little bit of our mummy robe still on the palette from when we first painted in the eyes, 
and I mix that in with the Minotaur hide, and I'm just going to pick out the very most extreme hard edges on the pouch here, and of course the stave, and this time I'm just focusing more on the top, even more so than before. I really wanna just draw a careful thin line with thin down paints to really pull off that wood grain effect. And here on the outside corner, just very gently, we're gonna pull an edge highlight with the edge of the brush to really pull off that wood grain effect. So very carefully here, just very carefully pull your highlights, very thin down paint, and there you go. It's really starting to look like real wood grain. If you remember from the previous tutorials, I had a mix of Abyssal Black and Ferris's Purple. Now I'm gonna be using a little bit of that and I'm gonna be applying some wet blending techniques, sort of like wet blending. So I have Pure Ferris's Purple on the palette and I'm gonna go ahead and apply that in the uppermost areas on these inner cloaks here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm, I'm pushing that purple boundary on this part of the model, on these capes of the model. And then again, just like we did on the skin tones, we're kind of gonna wet blend this back in because we don't want it to be pure purple. We do want to have a hint of that grayish black tone still remaining, but we want it to appear as if the light is catching this part of the cloak and the purple colors are reflecting off of it. So on these areas here down where the cape is kind of, where the cloth is kind of draped over the knee, the purple tone be more apparent here at the bottom of the knee. So we'll apply that there, and then we'll go back to our mix with the Abyssal Black and just work it back in, just a very subtle highlight. I also have some Purple Worm on my palette, and we're gonna do the same thing, just really push it into the corners right here, just very subtly. And we're gonna find the areas where we think that the light's gonna catch. And we'll go back with our Pure Fezzer's Purple, and we'll work it back in and just tone it back down. Then again with our mix of the gray. There you go. All you need is just a couple colors. The wet palette really helps here because it keeps those paints workable and pliable and a little bit of patience and you can pull off a really realistic wet blending effect. Now, for example, here on the folds of the capes, we'll begin with our Fezzerus Purple. Just to reinforce, let it dry. Go ahead and move on to the other folds on the cape. I'm just very simply, very subtly working in this pure Fezzerus Purple into the folds. And then I'm gonna take some of our pure Then I'm going to take some of our pure purple worm. I'm going to work that in a fine line down the ridges. And back to our Fezzer's purple. You can see we're kind of just working back and forth, back and forth. But it doesn't take a long time to pull off a really cool effect. And then if you want to, you go back to your 50-50 mix, that base tone that we've worked on in the past two tutorials, and just really blend that back in. You've got a nice, realistic, and subtle shade on the folds of the cape. We're going to repeat this across the rest of the model, and we'll come back to the next portion of this tutorial. Off the purple robes complete, we can move on to the other gray bits. And this time I am going to focus on the boots and the cape on the back as well as the hair. And I have pure underdark gray. And I'm just going to add a fine highlight to these areas. I'm just going to find the most raised areas on the model. Like here. In some of these areas I might just paint them all in because I'm going to come back with another highlight in the next step. But just find the most raised areas of all of the gray areas. Go ahead, block them in and highlight them like so. And then when you get to the cape on the back, now it's much more defined. You can see where we applied our first highlight of a 50-50 mix of underdark gray 
and abyssal black we applied a wash with our shadow wash now we're just painting inside the lines this time with underdark gray right inside these folds we can take the edge of the brush along these hard edges and just simply trace our highlight very simply this is a very subtle highlight it'll look a little bit more extreme once it's had time to dry now on the bottom of the capes i'm going to move on to a slightly larger brush this time i'm using a character brush and i'm going to go ahead and apply an edge highlight like i normally would but i am going to come back and reinforce these a bit later but i want to take some of this underdark gray get a little bit more on my brush here and I want to make this highlight stand out just a little bit more. Now I'm using, again, watered down paint, very thin paint, a lot more control of the paint, and I can apply it in thin layers and really work up this masterclass highlight very simply and the way I want to. So again, with Underdark Gray, just very carefully, we're gonna do that across the entirety of the cape and as well on the hair. So I've gone back to my detail brush, and I just want to pick out the facial here. I'm just going to draw a couple small dots with our underdark gray to pick out some of the hair features on the mustache and the goatee, very simply like that. I'm going to turn the model around and we could see the ridges in the hair that we previously highlighted in the level up tutorial. And we're just going to focus our pure underdark gray in the center there. Still looking black, like black hair. That's what we want, not too, too gray. Now, if it does begin to shift a little bit too far to gray to your liking, you could always add another wash and tone it back down. Apply it almost like a glaze just to tone back down the gray tones to bring it to a more, more black tone. So now I've got some orc skin, which is what we use to paint in the base on the model. And this time I'm just going to apply a very extreme highlight. I have my character brush and some watered down paints. And this is just gonna go on the most extreme edges of the cape and the boots, and as well as the hair. So I'm just gonna focus this in on the centermost areas to really give the impression that the light is bouncing off these ridges and folds on the cape. And the same thing here on the hair. So just the outermost and centermost areas. You can see just Already, the hair is already starting to pop. Same thing with the facial hair here. And could be using a slightly smaller brush for this, but I'm just going to take my time, save time by using the same one, and just very simply trace in a few details on his mustache and goatee. And when we get to the boots, we're just going to trace in the tip of the boot there. Just the tip of the boot there and a couple edge highlights, very subtle, like so. It's really been an exciting process developing these characters for this new product line called Game Master. Now, everybody at HQ had their hand in developing all of these characters that we're using to help narrate the storyline of our new product line. But we also hired John Gallagher, world-renowned artist, to help us with some of the box art. So let's take a look at what he has to say about our tiefling wizard. In terms of where, you know, he's gonna end up like the rest of the party, I really wanna see what, what the Game Master team does with uh, their dynamic and, you know, changing some of the clothes perhaps, or some of the garments, because not everybody's gonna wear the same costume all the time. And they're not superheroes, but they're close, but they still, you know, they have the opportunity in perhaps a, a different way than something to evolve their aesthetic. You know, I was going to find new magic items, I was going to find new new gear, new armor, whatever the case may be. And because he's a wizard, he can't wear armor, but he can always look sharp. And there's always going to be variants in there. So we'll, I'm, I'm interested to see where the team takes uh, him, as well, of course, as the, the rest of the party. And, uh, what we what we end up with uh, for a great result as as it moves forward. Uh, I have no doubt that the game master game master crew is going to come up with some some really wonderful uh, moments for uh, Zerkic and 
obviously the rest of the party, but him in particular, because those spells, they can get, they can get way crazy in a hurry. It's always fun to have some over the top fireworks in the middle of, uh, and ballistica in the middle of, uh, of a skirmish. Many thanks to John Gallagher for all of his hard work. We're going to be hearing more from him later on in the remaining tutorials that we're going to be producing for the rest of the characters in this Game Master Dungeon Party. I've taken Dragonfire Red, and I'm just going to apply this very thinly across all of the brighter red tones on the model. That's going to be all of the lining and the trim of his cape. And you can see that from the top down, I'm applying it from the top down and just kind of feathering it back down to get a nice gradation, a nice transition, brighter on top and a little bit darker on the bottom. So I'm gonna focus this on the top. I'm going to then pull these highlights down into the lower portions of these details on the model. Traditionally, reds are fairly weak in the pigment department, but our red paints do have quite a high pigmentation for nice, easy coverage. I've thinned these down on my palette, so it's nice and workable, and I like to have them nice and thin so I can work in simple layers. Also, by thinning down your paints with water, they do dry a bit quicker on the model, so you can go back and apply another layer a bit later. And in these areas, you see that I'm pulling my brush. I'm pulling and I'm not pushing the brush. That's because when you're using the brush in a pushing motion, it's very hard to keep control. You can see right here, I'm just gonna pull from the top down and pull the tip of that brush towards me. It's a more controlled motion. So anytime that you can't apply an edge highlight, but you are gonna pull these highlights towards you, always try and pull that brush towards you. Don't push the brush away. I'm gonna go around the rest of the model. I'm gonna find these hard edges, leaving some of that wash and the darker tones in the recesses. Really make this model pop, really make this red jump out at you try and mimic Mr. John Gallagher's artwork as best as we can. We're gonna apply a similar highlight technique to the folds in the robes, just like we did with our grayish purple mix earlier. Now we're gonna reinforce the red highlights. This time I have Rust Monster, and this is a nice bright orange, but a reddish hue orange, and I'm just gonna find the most extreme tips of the cape here and any of the details. And I'm just gonna pick them out with this rust monster. Very simply, I'm gonna trace where I have to. For example, here, I'm just going to apply some of that rust monster to my brush. And I'm gonna take the edge of the brush and I'm just going to trace the edge like so. It's the easiest way to highlight if you ask me. But of course, you can't do that on every portion of the model. You're gonna have to employ traditional techniques and use a steady hand to go ahead and trace in and pull out these highlights. All right, and other than the base, we are finished with all of our highlights. We are going to apply just a subtle highlight to all of the cobblestones with some lawful white. I'm going to do that off camera, save you guys a bit of time here. Right now we're going to highlight all of the metallic pieces. So I've got some curing gold, and I'm just going to apply a small highlight to all of the copper bits of metallics on the model, like here, this little necklace piece. I'm just picking out the raised areas. And on his shoulders, he's got this bracelet, this arm bracelet that I really want to highlight. So just very subtly with curing gold. I'm going to pick out some of the raised details and edges, leaving some of the original dwarf blonde bronze, excuse me, dwarf bronze in the recesses. Now we'll move on to mithril silver and we will pick out all of the silver bits on the model, like his ring here. Just very subtle highlights. the buckle on his pouch, and of course these metal rings on his stave. And then, and then the hard edges of his stave. 
I'm leaving some of the washed bits from the mithril silver that we applied in the first step. We're using silver dragon here in the recesses and just applying this to the hard edges. If you've been following along to all three of our Tiefling Wizard series of tutorials, I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed painting up this model. Remember that you can find all of the paints and products that we use today from your friendly local game store, from your favorite online provider such as Amazon, or at www.thearmypainter.com. Remember that the magic in miniature painting is that it can be as simple or as challenging as you'd like it to be, but with the right techniques, you're sure to achieve some great results. We'll see you next time.